I think Guy is probably one of the most creative businessmen that I've had the pleasure of working with. Um, he's not only a venture capitalist and founder of co-founder of Garage Technology Ventures, he's had uh, great success in the blossoming of, of Apple Computer in its, in its early days. And he's also um, a serial entrepreneur. Um, he's, he's currently the CEO and founder of, of Trumers and uh, All Top. It'll be interesting to hear from Guy Kawasaki. Uh, I may have to somewhat contradict the previous two speakers. Uh, I think we're, I'm not 180 degrees different from them. Uh, it may be that Garage Technology Ventures, in my experience, is primarily in the earlier stages uh, than their, particularly Catherine's. Uh, but I have some thoughts for you about fundraising. Uh, I am, as you heard, both a venture capitalist and an entrepreneur. Uh, I guess one piece of advice or one, one piece of evidence is that as an entrepreneur, I chose not to raise venture capital. Uh, that should tell you something right there. The, uh, the, I like to use the top 10 format for my presentations, but today I will not because I only have 15 minutes and I cannot rip through 10 things in, in 15 minutes. I'll give you my top five, which is arguably even better because now you know, I've really got it distilled for you. So my advice to entrepreneurs raising money uh, in this valley at this time, early stage, um, is this five points here. Uh, the first piece of advice I have for you is consider whether you are truly a venture capital type of deal. Um, I, I cannot tell you how many entrepreneurs I meet with that they have a very fundable business and they will raise venture capital. I also meet with a lot of entrepreneurs who have a very viable business but will never raise venture capital. And the two are often confused in this game that fundable equals viable and viable equals fundable. And I'll give you an example. I think that an IT consulting services for the conversion and installation of Vista is a highly viable business. You know, unlimited demand for that. Uh, but I do not believe it is a fundable business. And so my first piece of advice is that in the early stage game, if you want to raise money, you truly have to create something that is worth funding, which sounds like a duism, except that this means that almost by definition, in three or four years, you have to be able to, without being on cocaine or crack at the current moment you're saying this, you have to believe that you can be doing 75 or $100 million in revenue. So this eliminates a lot of things like consultancies, many service firms, uh, restaurants, uh, you know, retail stores, and uh, lots of people just can't take that. They, they just, they, they believe, they, I don't know, they read it in the San Francisco Chronicle or the San Jose Mercury, how all these companies are get funded, and it makes sense to them that you know, they're going to do some kind of company that should also be a venture fundable deal, and it's simply not because it's just unimaginable that this kind of company will be doing $100 million. So my first piece of advice is create something that's worth funding for a venture capitalist. It's a very select game, and I think only about 3,000 companies a year get funded in the venture capital game, and there are roughly 30 million companies that are funded in other ways. So this is a very, very different game. So that's the first piece of advice. Um, the second piece of advice is to use a dating analogy. I, I think that much of fundraising for venture capital uh, firm is like dating. Now, there are two kinds of dating sites in the world, uh, personified by two extremes. One is Hot or Not. And at Hot or Not, if you've never seen it, you should try it. You go to Hot or Not, and there's a woman's picture or a man's picture. You probably have been there, right? <laughs> Looking for that girl of your dreams, right? And there's a picture of a woman or a man, and all there really is is a picture, and you decide, hot or not, that's it. Okay? At the other extreme, there's eHarmony, which is probably what your parents would rather you use. So at eHarmony, you, know, you create this whole psychographic, I like to take walk, long walks on the beach, I'm interested in environment, I drive a Prius, um, I really like to get to know a person, um, I am you know, communicative, I'm warm, I'm sensitive. Uh, that's the other extreme, and I'll tell you my opinion is that Venture capital is hot or not. 
And in the first 5, 10, or maybe 15 seconds, people decide. They decide because of what you look like, your accent, their mood of the day, um, whether you take f the first 15 minutes to explain your background as opposed to you explain immediately what you do. But I, I think the decision is made roughly at hot or not speeds. And that has important consequences. You should know it's like that. It is a dating game. And many companies come to Garage and they spend literally 15 minutes explaining the background of the founders. And I don't know about other venture capitalists, but really, until I hear what they do, I could care less what their background is. Now, if you are John Chambers or Steve Jobs and you want to come in and talk about your background and why you're fundable, okay. But John Chambers and Steve Jobs probably not raising money. And so the fact that you have attended all the .net, .net classes uh, offered by Microsoft at their Mountain View campus doesn't really prove you know anything. Um, the fact that you work for Home Depot so you understand commerce doesn't really prove anything either. So um, you have roughly 15 seconds. It is hot or not. You are either hot or not. It is not about eHarmony or we're trying to you know, become friends. The third thing that I learned is, uh, and this is not because uh, this is a Montgomery and Hanson production. You need to present a clean deal because at any given moment, we're always looking at dozens of deals. And so a clean deal means that there's no pending lawsuit about the IP. There's no sexual harassment lawsuit. Um, you haven't hired your husband as the CFO or your wife as the CMO. There's no relatives in your company. Uh, it's not like you worked at a disk drive company during the day and now you're creating a disk drive company at night so you know that someone's going to be pissed off that you took your technology. None of that. Um, it has to be an absolutely clean deal. You, you're not using your uncle the divorce lawyer to write your incorporation papers and you're creating your classes of stock. Uh, you, you don't you know, bring out your NOLO press, you know, form a, a subchapter S corporation manual when you're at the thing. Just Use the right law firms, use the typical law firms, uh, and present a clean deal. Now, obviously, not everybody is a clean deal. And my advice would be, in the second meeting, admit where you're not clean. Admit that there's a pending lawsuit. Admit that, you know, in a moment of stupidity, you hired your brother-in-law as CTO, whatever it is. Because in due diligence, it will come out. And it's better that you state it than they discover that there is a pending lawsuit about intellectual property.